Hello everybody. As the title suggests, I once found a dead body and I thought I would just tell the story of it. This took place in the 1990s and because I lived in Elswick, it was cheaper to walk into Newcastle than it was to get the bus and it had been snowing and on top of that, the river time was frozen. So I and my friend decided it would be interesting to walk along the riverside to have a look at the river. We walked on the newly built, or relatively newly built, riverside path, which went through some new buildings and industrial estates, and also there was some remains of the previous industry that had been down there at the time. The river was indeed frozen, and there was quite a lot of snow, which was quite exciting for the time, because I'd never seen the river frozen before. Now, as we got to the old jetties, that were just before the Redjuf Bridge, we saw what looked like a man leaning over one of the support joists of the jetty. We actually made a joke about what a scruffy must be to be down there. But then, he didn't move. And he continued not to move. And then we noticed that he was covered in snow. We looked at each other, and then we looked back at the body. There was a good chance that what we were seeing was a washed up dead body that had ended up suspended on the beam. Now this was one of those situations, when you're a kid, you're not really certain that what you're seeing is necessarily real. And we really questioned ourselves whether this was actually a body. It may have been the 1990s, but we didn't have mobile phones at the time, so there was no way that we could call anybody. Just as we were talking and discussing this, a couple walked past, and we made eye contact with them, and we showed them what we had seen, and they simply dismissed it as some sort of shop dummy or stagnite blow-up doll that had been thrown into the river. And this really made us question what we were seeing again, but there was just something about it where we thought this was a dead body, but it seemed that nobody that was walking past would quite believe us. So, the only thing that I could do was to run back to a payphone. We knew that there was a payphone back on the new industrial estate, so I ran all the way there. I phoned my mother and I told her what had happened. And all she did was accuse us of making up a story so we could get a lift to town. And she said that she wouldn't come no matter what I said. But I continuously insisted that we had found a dead body and she had to drive down in her old Ford Granada to help us. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't I phone the police? I didn't phone the police because I thought that maybe it wasn't a dead body and that maybe if we got the police involved, that we'd just get into trouble and be called idiots for phoning the police for some washed up shop mannequin. I then ran all the way back to the scene where my friend was talking to another man who did seem to take us a bit more seriously. And more importantly, this man did have a mobile phone. He agreed that he would phone the police on our behalf, but he wasn't going to hang around. And indeed he didn't. He quite simply phoned them told them that there was maybe a body, and then left. So once again, we were just left there, standing in the snow, wondering if anything was going to happen. And after about 10 minutes, something did happen, something I've never seen before or since. The river police came in their boat, breaking up the ice as they came along. They pulled up the boat alongside where we were, and they looked at what they saw, and then they stopped. And then again, nothing happened. We just stood there. People were walking past, glancing at what we had seen and just continuing to walk as if there was nothing there. But eventually a police car did turn up. The police briefly spoke to us and then I need to explain where the body was. See, there was a large mud embankment that went down alongside the jetty and the body was at the very bottom of this mud embankment just before the water. It was very difficult to get down there. And that was the reason why we hadn't gone down and got closer to the body. Although, I think even if we could have got closer to the body, we probably wouldn't have done. The youngest policeman did go down the embankment and got closer to it. Not right up to it, but close enough. Then he came back up and said, yes, it probably is a dead body. The policeman then told us to stay there, and he went back to his car with his colleague. And again, nothing happened. We stood and waited for the police to come back but they just stayed in their car. Shortly, we found out what they'd been doing, and that was contacting the fire brigade, who came out with a fire engine. 
Now, at the back of the fire engine, they got these enormous mats that could go over the mud. They rolled these out across the mud, and then they went down, and they were able to inspect the body. And we found out that it was frozen solid, and they were going to have to break the body up. At this point, another man had turned up, who I now assume was some sort of crime scene investigator, and he came to talk to us and said we had two options. One, we could stay there and talk to him, or he could contact us at a later date to take statements. We decided to stay, and he informed us that it would probably be quite gruesome what we were about to see. And, indeed, it was really gruesome, because, as he explained to us, they were going to have to snap the body into pieces to get it off the pier. Because of this, I now know that a body being snapped in half, as he told us the spine will break, sounds like a large piece of broken wood being snapped in half. They broke the body up, put it into a body bag, and then dragged the body bag up to the path. We then were told to step back several paces so we couldn't quite see what was happening, which we did so. Then something odd happened. The fire brigade got the youngest member of their team to come over, who I assume was their newest recruit. They then got him to put his face quite close to the body bag. Then one of them unzipped it right in his face so he could come face to face with the dead body. This caused him to jump back while they all laughed. Then he was sick over the side of the river. Our details were then taken, the body was taken away, and we were just left to get on with our day. Then, amazingly, my mother pulled up in her car, saw that we had been telling the truth, and did indeed give us that lift into town after all. The next thing that we knew about this was the following day, when the front page of the Chronicle said that a body had been found by a passerby. It turned out that the body was of a local petty criminal who was up for some serious charges in court the following month. Because of the state of the body, they were unable to determine how he died. And that is the story of when I found a dead body.